Welcome to the Blueprint for California Advocates podcast. I'm so honored to have Evan Minton and Rainer Apostle joining me for a conversation about trans joy. And I'd like to kick it off by asking Rainer to introduce themselves to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Christina. Really appreciate it. My name is Rainer. I use they, them pronouns, and I came into this space through my own experience, my own identity, and got familiar and involved with the Capitol and LGBTQ advocacy here as a fellow with Assemblymember Adliar Curry last year. And then I'm now lucky to be in Senator Caroline Menjavar's office, who is part of the LGBTQ community, and to get the staffer on that. And I'm so excited to talk to you with Evan, one of my mentors in this space today about trans joy and trans visibility. Excellent. I'm Evan. My pronouns are he and they. I'm the co-chair of the Democratic National Committee's Transgender Advisory Committee, and I'm able to co-chair that with Delaware State Senator Sarah McBride, who's the first openly trans legislature in our nation, and that's with other openly non-binary and trans state legislators throughout our nation. So we get a national overview of the trans movement from that position. And then I'm lucky enough to be able to co-chair the Lieutenant Governor's Transgender Advisory Council. I drive local policy through different positions, including the Sacramento Police Review Commission's ad hoc LGBTQ plus committee. So I do a lot of work at a lot of different levels. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. It is Trans Visibility Week having this conversation to elevate voices and to address some of the issues that are happening in California locally and around the country that make these conversations even more important to be having. Rainer, I thought I would ask to start off with non-binary identity as a member of the trans community. And if you could share your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. The trans community is a big community. It's a really inclusive community. And I think that different people fit into it in different ways. And it's really depends on how people identify themselves. I know for some people being trans is any identity that doesn't fall under the gender. You don't identify with the gender that you are birth. You don't, you don't resonate with that. That's not you. In that sense, I would say that a lot of non-binary folks would identify as, as part of the trans, trans plus community, but there's definitely unique experiences that come with different trans identities for folks that would identify as trans male or trans female or who undergo gender affirming surgery or have a more medical component to their to their gender affirmation that is definitely a different experience and there are there is a place i would say for everybody kind of within within the trans plus community but we definitely say that different experiences should be recognized the trans community is is not a monolith and some non-binary people for example may identify under the trans umbrella and some may not and I would say it's all about where people feel that they fall and all of that should be embraced and celebrated. I always say that trans people are like snowflakes in the fact that we're all unique. Um, You know, and we all have our unique journeys to take. And I just completely back up what Rainer said. I just want everyone who feels that they are part of our movement to know that they are, that they're validated, and that this trans visibility day is a day in which you know, we say and affirm that we see every every person under our trans umbrella. And whether that is, you know, someone who's gendered on conforming, whether that is our trans sibling who is non-binary, who is gender diverse in any sort of way, we see you, we're celebrating you, and you belong. Thank you for that. I feel as an ally to the community, that it's important that those of us who have platforms, you know, however small, use the voice that we have to uplift voices of folks who aren't traditionally getting the type of attention as other communities. And especially now, um, Evan, I reached out to you a while back because I have just been absolutely devastated by the increase. It's not like it's brand new, the increase in the vitriol and outright vicious physical and political attacks against trans folks in the United States. And so I felt very compelled to get involved because 
I do not think that you're alone here. I, I'm very conscious that this is a part of a historical pattern of alienating and attacking the most marginalized communities in order to move agendas that are based on hate. This is not just happening to the trans community. We are all in this together. This whole democracy thing only works when we all have freedom to be who we are in peace. And so we should just be cognizant this isn't the first time in history this stuff has happened. And so I welcome, even though we are here to talk about trans joy, it's really important to set the context of what is happening around the conversation. I welcome either of you, your thoughts on just where, where we are at in the national space right now. Yeah, well, I knew that it was important to celebrate Trans Day Visibility 2023 very publicly. And so what I would normally be reminded of by last year's like Facebook post and do another Facebook post, I decided to really make it just a series of events this year. And Rainer has been a partner of crime in those efforts, along with Nikki Pichelle and Christina, you really have stepped in as well. And so I just want to say that we need more allies to step up. But I, I came up with these ideas because due to my um, position at the DNC, I had requested about six weeks ago a presentation of all of the anti-trans legislature that had been introduced this year alone. And so that was about a month and some change into the year. And at that point, it was around 250 pieces of legislation and some was already passing. It was just harmful, harmful yeah. to the gut. And all of us, it was just the saddest call that we'd been on yet. And I took two things away from that. I took, you know, endless gratitude to the person who put that presentation together. And the other thing that I took was that I needed to get the word out as far as I could because the New York Times or the Washington Post summed it really well when Trump was leaving office. They said the Trump administration attacked the trans community in every way imaginable. And the thing is, after the Trump administration left office, the attacks decreased, they only increased. And so from the beginning stages of, you know, what can we do in order to combat the, the tsunami of hate, you know, these 250 bills to where we are today celebrating, you know, having passed the Sacramento City Unified School Board presentation for the first time over ever, the trans flag is now flying over that district, you know, as we speak, which is oh, just a, an amazing sight to behold. Uh, celebrating the statewide day of action, which we've never had before. You know, the Sacramento City Hall is now passing a resolution. That's that's the first time ever. The county, the county board of supervisors well as well. But, you know, from the day that we had first discussed about doing something to now, there, there's been an increase of 200 bills. So now there are 426. Bills. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Against our community, even here yeah. in California, which Rena will talk about in a little bit. And in between that time as well, at that conservative CPAC conference from the stage, they've called for the eradication of transgender people entirely from public life. Um, and then in addition to that, the daily, you know, the regular phone calls that I get just from folks in our area, from parents of trans kids who are in any political party, you know, letting me know that their kids are having to hold their pee, you know, not finding a place to go to the restroom because of all the stigma attached in our public school systems, that they're afraid to go to their after school providers because the after school providers aren't consistently using their correct pronouns. My friend, a highly decorated individual here in Sacramento, is a black trans woman and literally is not safe walking out of her apartment. And then in Reading, you know, at their school board meetings, they're targeting, their school board members are literally targeting their trans kids. And so saying that California is like progressive and, you know, I think that people have this misidea that everything's great. It's comparatively better, of course, but it's just like there's so much more work that needs to, to be improved. 
we have the people who are working on it. We need, you know, we can use more, but it's just, we have some pretty awesome people who are doing that work. I want to hand it over to to Reader to also comment if that's okay. Yeah, um, I would definitely echo everything that Evan is saying. I think even in California, my trans and trans plus friends, as well as allied folks have been just really shocked, even though maybe it shouldn't be so surprising that even in California, we're seeing anti-trans legislation. And for a lot of us, it's in the place that we work or we're seeing anti-trans opposition to bills that are supposed to be affirming to our communities. We shouldn't, as a state and, and in your own circles and communities, underestimate the impact that that has on the mental health of the trans and trans plus people that, that you know, I think staff who are seeing right. this are struggling. I think a lot if not all people have a trans person, whether they know it or not in their lives. And it can really be a huge help to even just have the kind of vocal support of your communities being loud and vocal in the support of your rights. Even in my own life, my mom, since I came out as non-binary, who is a high school teacher, has talked about me in her classrooms. To Evan's point about our trans youth and supporting them, even her just talking about me and them knowing that she has a child who is non-binary. So many students have gone to her looking for support and affirmation. Mm. And a lot of those students with this bill, or at least one of the bills in the legislature right now, which has stoked a lot of anti-trans sentiment, is saying that if students were to come to her, she would have to tell their parents if they're not out to them. And so I mm. think it just really highlights the importance of supporting the trans people in your life, whether or not you are yourself trans, and also not underestimating the impact of, of that support and of the negative effects of even introducing legislation. I know people will say, like, in California, obviously, it's not going to get passed. Maybe it won't even get a hearing. Like, this is a small minority. But I think it doesn't feel like that. And I know California has been a pretty predominantly blue state, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that we're immune from anti-trans sentiment. So I think just having the support of your your community is really important and not underestimating that. Is it okay if I talk through with you this legislation? Because I want to use this as an education opportunity for folks who heard about the bill or read it or are listening who are thinking, well, that sounds reasonable. You know, why wouldn't they have to tell a parent about their child's gender identity. There's a very important other side to that that sadly a lot of people aren't aware of that I think we need to educate them on. So I would love if either of you spoke to that. Yeah, I think that we both could. You know, I'll just say that, you know, the same reason why parental notification of minors seeking, you know, abortion, which is a ballot measure that Californians have decisively voted against again and again is so similar to the reasons why kind of bill would be harmful as well. We all like to imagine that, you know, parents are across the board are just welcoming and supportive and right off the bat and, you know, are just going to be there for their kid. And the fact is that we know that that's not the case. In, in, in a lot of times, right? Of course. And yeah. that's why I believe it's the biggest segment of, of our unhoused youth or homeless youth are queer kids. And it's yeah. because they're in an abusive household and they run away or they get thrown out, you yeah. know? Definitely just just echoing that. Just as kids don't tell their parents a lot of things that are going on in their lives, if they're right. questioning right. their, yes. their yeah. gender identity in particular, our younger communities are getting more comfortable and more exposed and feeling safer to explore their gender identities. But yeah, not all homes are are safe or necessarily ready for that kind of environment. And yeah, we do see trans youth experiencing the highest rates of homelessness and criminalization, experiencing what they're experiencing and for exploring their gender identities and things like that. And so it is really important that we have places that students and trans youth are feeling safe and not being forcibly outed. I think that that's Maybe right. a more common narrative that you hear about in like LGBT spaces, specifically like the importance of not outing somebody against their against their will to somebody who they didn't yeah. have decided that they're not ready to tell yeah. for whatever reason. And so the importance that students are just feeling yeah. safe and supported because yeah. we know that trans youth will seek services, but only if they feel safe. And so it's really important that you're not you're not right. forcing them right. out earlier than they're ready or putting them in situations that they, for whatever reason, have not decided that they want to be in yet. I think that's so important. And it calls to my mind this sort of like just 
attitude of, you know, these conversations were, we didn't have them when I was growing up. Like, it was not a problem before. Why is it a problem now? And, mm. you know, it's just like confronting privilege. Well, it wasn't a problem for you. That didn't mean it wasn't a problem. And that's across the board, right? Your experience is not everyone else's experience. And yes, when I was in high school, it was a completely different time in terms of people talking about any of these things. And thank God we're not in that time anymore. But the notion that you can legislate your experience to be everyone else's experience, and then this is across the board, it's just a spectacular failure to have empathy, uh, really just get out of your own shoes and understand that 40 million people in California, not all of them live the way that you do or had the most positive and affirming parents out there. And if you did, then God bless you. But that doesn't mean everybody does. Thank you for, for exploring that with me. When I think about it, you know, what I sometimes say to legislators, it's that it doesn't have to be that complicated. You know, the fact is, is all different kinds of people exist. Your role as a legislator is being a steward of the public good. So if you want to protect the well-being, the safety, and affirm the human dignity of all of your constituents, then all you have to do is look at what is the best thing that I can do to protect the well-being of all of my constituents and of the most vulnerable in particular, those who are closest to the pain. Thank you for pointing that out, Evan. Um, it seems as though, in general, there's a lot of conversation in all of this legislation that we're seeing in these other states and in California um, that it's basically coming from a place that there's these like awful nefarious things happening out there and it's being guided by conspiracy thinking. So this is where we're at. I mean, this is where we're at in general, right? In the United States, sadly, this is what happens when the political discourse degenerates for years and years and years. And you were saying yeah. before, often, you know, different communities are, but often, you know, the trans community is one of the canaries in the coal mine. Right. And what I say is that if if they're ever able to eradicate us, it will be over my dead body, but it won't stop with us. And so that's exactly. why everybody, you know, hey, if you're not going to be an ally to us out of, out of empathy, it's like be an ally to us out of, out of those means. But also that's why it's so important, you know, for our community to celebrate our trans joy and to continue to cultivate that trans joy. And part of that trans joy is expressed through activism, Part of that is expressed through art. Part of that trans joy is expressed through drag. I was just watching RuPaul, RuPaul's Drag Race last night, and I was like, I love our queer culture. <laughs> but Raider is a big proponent of trans joy, which I am finding more inspiring and just taking moments to, yeah. you know, celebrate. So, <laughs> yeah. What does I trans think, joy um, mean to you, Raynor? Really, it can be so many things. And I feel like, and I don't know, Evan maybe has his own experience with this, but when I'm around other like trans and queer people, there's just so much laughter and happiness and feeling safe. And I feel like it's surprising to me how good that feels to just be around people who you feel seen by and who you feel like you see them. And it can be doing anything from having a queer lunar new year party where you're doing a fashion show with your friends. It can be going to a gay bar and doing karaoke. It can be helping your friend through a breakup and you guys start laughing so that you don't start crying. And it can really just be so many things. And I feel like I have felt lucky and this has definitely made me more cognizant of it that I have been in so many queer and trans spaces growing up and, and being in, in an area like the Bay Area where there was just so much celebration of queerness and of transness. It felt like such a great and safe environment yeah. to be in where people just care so deeply about each other and about the issues that are affecting all of us but it doesn't feel like so much of our experience is not so serious you know like it's right. it's just hanging out and having a good time with one another right. and right feeling less like maybe rigid in in gender identities and not thinking about so much about all these serious things that we're bogged down with all the time but really just focusing on the joy evan and i have talked about these these moments and part of that is is the acceptance and love of the people who are not trans around us and just how good that feels to to feel seen and feel loved by the people around you. And so, yeah, just thinking about highlighting that with this Trans Week of Visibility, too, it's really a celebration of all our identities. 
and experiences in light of whatever the hell the legislators across the country are doing and and the haters i love evan is always saying the haters <laughs> i feel yeah. like it's an act of resistance <laughs> to, to have joy yes yes and also for me it's just like an activist having the best of both worlds because it's just like having joy and then i'm like i'm having joy in layer. light of you <laughs> You know, and so it's not just like, I get to have resistance and joy in one, you know, and I'm like, that's cool. But yeah, no, and like, you know, I'm going to tell a cute little anecdote because it's just like, Rainer and I did discuss that, you know, for me, like, because I deal in this heavy crap, like in, and so rarely am I lifted out of it, but it's just like, there are those pockets, you know, and for me, joy was passing that school resolution. You know, at Sac City Unified, and it was historic. The classrooms are encouraged to talk about trans day of visibility forevermore. There will be one week of trans week of visibility at the school. There's going to be an LGBTQ liaison at every school site. All of the rainbow clubs are all going to have additional staff support. There is so many good things in it. And I was just heartened for a couple of days afterwards. And I'm just like, there's... So much drudgery in organizing and in activism right. and stuff like that. But it's just like, you know, when you get those moments, it's like, hang on to it. And it's the solidarity that one feels yeah. amongst other activists. And then for me, you know, when I was on my journey and my journey, with meaning my transition, which I consider over now, but my journey of evolution is never over. But some of my trans joy came from... Whenever I took a step forward in my transition, I felt as bliss. And it was like nothing that I'd ever experienced before. But it's like being trans has enabled me to get to know myself on such deeper levels that I never would have otherwise. There's something to be said for people who have gone to hell and back a million times. And we are still here and we're still fighting. We are so incredibly strong you can't even Absolutely. believe how strong we yeah. are it's all the people in the capital who have come before me and made it so that me getting my pronouns on my business cards was a non-issue mm. because they already put pronouns on business mm. cards and getting to use a name that right. wasn't my legal name but my chosen name because right. if you don't know changing your legal name is a very expensive and lengthy process but that being a non-issue because we have workplace protection for using a name of your choosing on your ids and things like that and having a bathroom i can use on my floor that's gender neutral those things are also part of trans joy and queer joy is just knowing the people that came before you and fought before you and they were thinking about me when when they did this and and all the other mm -hmm. queer and trans people in the building now and that are to come and i think that that can be really inspiring and why trans youth are so important to us is because we know the world that they're coming into and we want to make it safer and we want to make it better for them and that's why school boards are important and and having education and history is so important because we know that we right. want to make this an easier place to be, an easier world to be in. That is really joyous thinking about the people who, who fought for it to make it easier for me to be here. And that's so important because the thing is, unfortunately, there's so much bureaucracy in being trans. When I was, you know, having to get various surgeries, I would have to get different doctors to sign off. And the culturally competent doctors are, are just few and far between who are willing to sign off on our papers. And that's definitely a problem. But I remember being at the health center and I remember they had this phone book of supposed trans-friendly doctors. And I would just call doctor after doctor after doctor saying, are you comfortable signing off on a letter in order for me to get, I don't even remember which surgery or which medical like point intervention or name change or whatever, but it was something. And all the doctors were saying no. And these were the ones who were supposed to be our closest allies. Finally, I took a step back and I said to myself, this isn't my mental health problem. This is society's mental health problem. That's right. When you're able to get to that point, you can just own it. You know, that this isn't me. This is all of like yeah. these structures that yeah. are in place hindering us. And so what Rainer said, it's so important, you know, for us to say, yeah, we're facing these statistics. We're facing these barriers. You know, people are calling for the eradication of us, but it has nothing to do with who we are as people. Who we are as people are just like actually amazing people. But it's like, um, of course, there's that resistance because it's just there is everything in the world trying to pull us back and trying to lean us back. And it, when you're able to like dance in the rain, it's like the most powerful thing. You know, I just love it. I just adore it.
And so when we're able to go to those drag shows and like, I just find such power. And I find such power in our ability to cultivate and have fun. And overcome. Um, yeah, while we're overcoming in the midst of overcoming. So what do you have planned for Trans Visibility Week starting on March 27th? It's super exciting. So because of everything that we are facing right now, we need our allies to be strong, full supporters. And so that is what this day, March 27th, is intended to do. It is our first statewide day of visibility. And so please go ahead and grab our social media frame for Twitter or for Facebook from Christina's social media profile from Rainers from mine. If you have a pin that says trans people belong or any sort of message that is inclusive for trans folks, go ahead, take a selfie with it, put it up on your social media accounts. Let us know. We're happy to retweet it. We really want this day to be about a standing in solidarity and that takes all of us together. Excellent. And, and there's a graphic that they can download right in the toolkit and actually just print it out and put it on a button that works just yeah. as good. Yeah, be creative. Creativity is highly encouraged. That's so thankful to you and to all the folks who are listening and also just trying to uplift. This community is definitely everybody is part of Trans Joy and supporting Evan and I's Trans Joy this week. I love it. Any last word, Evan? Yeah, I think I, I just want to say if folks don't know, I'm considered to be the first openly trans staffer in the Capitol. And I remember when I had to walk those halls by myself. I remember when I had to stand in the back of chambers when they were debating trans bills. And it was lonely, but I also just had this tidal wave of support from fellow staffers and advocates. You all would come up and hug me and you would, you know, write me emails saying just one or two words just saying that you were there for me. And that got me so far through. And I want to encourage you to do that for the queer and trans staffers today. And I want you to know that whether a bill that supports the trans community or whether it's a bill that is up in opposition, the same force come out on either side. And trans staffers really need the support of our allies. And so I want to thank so many people who embraced me and just ask you to please embrace the trans staffers that are in the building now. Thank you so much for raising that. And that's another item folks can take away from the conversation. Thank you again for having this spirited and uplifting and also serious conversation. It's really my honor to have you on. And so I look forward to seeing you both next week. And Thank also you, taking Christina. part and joining with you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Bye, you. everyone that's listening. Bye, everyone.